Uh, how are you guys? Good. Awesome. I uh, I have to say, I, I I love the film. It's my favorite animated film of the year. Oh, um, thank you. And it it couldn't have had a harder degree of difficulty to get to me. And not because I don't like your stuff. I do always. But it was literally the first thing I watched after I got broken up with. <laughs> and Ooh. it is, you know, that's it's asking for trouble for a movie to like solve your problems, especially when you realize very quickly, oh, this is a mellow like memory of happier times. <laughs> I don't have those anymore. Oh, good. And uh, you know, your first instinct is fuck this movie, but so <laughs> quickly it washes over you and just warms you. And it's, I mean, obviously that's the intent, but when you guys first set out to start work on it, how do you, how do you know that you've kind of captured the right vibe? I mean, you know, so many of your films are hangout vibes, but like, yeah reflecting a memory that is you know incredibly specific but also meant to seem universal is a well an alchemy there i'm glad you were able to it transported you to some other <laughs> nothing like being transported to another time and place to yeah. get over your current woes and let me tell you that that's how we felt making it you know the pandemic had just hit you know, everything sucked. Everything shut down. I always told people it was so fun to work on this during like what seemed like the worst time in memory ever um, to be working on this transportation to another time and place and really another age. We're not exactly a breakup film <laughs> for you. No. No. Pre even such a thing being a possibility. You've scratched that itch. Don't worry. Yeah, I, I've done that. So I was happy to be out of adult um you know, concerns like that or just seen from a kid's eyes. But, you know, I mean, the whole thing was a tonal challenge. All movies are. But to try to be very realistic to the time and kind of capture the realism of that with the the fantasy realism of it also. So and that's not only in the performance and tone, but, you know, the look of the film, too. Tommy and I spent a lot of time just talking about the various looks we wanted to kind of amalgamate and make it the memory piece, the memory slash fantasy piece it wanted to be. Yeah. You know, it is. How, how do you, yeah. How do you, how do you find that when you, cause you know, you, you start from, it can look like anything. Yeah. You know, you, you guys have experience with it, but also like, where do you, where do you come down on? Oh, this looks well, right. You go into your own memory, for one. Yeah. We were talking about, like, God, you know, home movies, Kodachrome 40, black and white TV, color TV, movies, just the textures of the time, the look. You know, a lot of newsreel footage was kind of, sh it was beautiful, but it was like 16 millimeter underlit, kind yeah. of monochromatic. So we just talked about carrying those images that were seared in our memory, just carrying those through the movie. You know, yeah. those textures and looks. I mean, so it, how, to, how to achieve that? You know, there's not a lot of films that want a lot of different looks, but this really was begging for it. Oh, yeah. And I, I and I think it's the one I would argue even more so than than Waking Life or Scanner Darkway that the that having a look like this fits the emotions it wants you to have. It, it never feels like an experiment. It never feels like, oh, let's try this and see what happens. It yeah. feels like this. This is how I have to tell the story. Yeah, that's certainly how it feels. And that's by the time we were doing it. But Tommy, you can start talking because you articulate very well how we were really making this up as we went, even yeah. though we knew exactly what we wanted. It, it's yeah. kind of interesting to know it was just how to achieve that exactly what we wanted. Right. Well, we had the benefit of of making other projects together. Yeah. Animated. And so we we knew what that toolkit was already. We kind of knew where we could sort of dip into that well. And I I think, you know, we started production very quickly and we didn't have the amount of pre-production you normally would have. But again, the benefit of the collaboration, working with the people that we have worked with for a long time, we had people on this that were on Scanner Darkly and Waking Life as well. Yeah it really helped because there's a common language already. So we could take that leap of faith and you could find that within there. And there was such a strong sort of base to, to begin. And so much design work was also just in the memory part. A lot of our, our debates were like, okay, we know what Galveston looks like. Sure. 
do we want it to look the way that we imagine it looked like when we were younger or the way that it looked like in real life? Right. <laughs> so it was really like, where do we, where do we find that? How do we navigate through reality and fantasy? And that's really where, you know, we found almost every single scene, almost down to every shot. That's what we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a lot of historical reference too. I spent years kind of working on this. We had a lot of photo and just archival yeah. reference. So we could point to the, some shitty home movie of that's what the black dragon at the, <laughs> you know, oh. it was up to animators. We we're creating all this, but it's like, we had a lot of reference. Well, so yeah, that helped. Home movies is kind of what I what I thought while you're watching it. It, it feels like somebody took yeah. someone else's home movies, which on the surface is the least interesting thing you can want. Nobody wants to watch someone else's home movies. No, they're boring. You even watch your own, really. But in your own, yeah. Yeah, but there's something about the way it looks, having having the animation, having it be like wholesome is the wrong word, but like wistful in an interesting way. Like there's a there's another version of this movie that like can grind your gears because it's like in a you know these were a better day and you know one you know good old days is a coded thing but it feels like you're you're listening to someone who has led a good life and is happy but is remembering this other point where there was a different way of being happy i was you know i i was able to be happy by like being told get out of the house go play come back when it's dark now it sounds horrifying then it sounded great there's this it's in it's like a like a playfulness that that i think is really palpable while you watch it yeah, well, that's what I was definitely trying to capture. I mean, every kid, you only know the childhood that's in front of you. Oh, yeah. but you don't really have any references. And it's interesting, as time goes on, you think about it. You know, I've never made a period film where I wanted people to say, oh, I wish I would have lived then. Yeah. I'm always really trying to say, ah, that kind of sucked. But it never really worked out that way. It always looks, I mean, people were kind of these nostalgia generators of, oh, that looks like a good time. But we really went out of our way to show uh you know chasing ddt trucks yeah. being paddled being abused you know there's there's some sections there but the, the film has an irony to it you know you survive your childhood and it's still in my mind it's like oh that but that was still an interesting place in time to be a kid that yeah. was a worthy it hit me that that was a worthy moment in time to to explore from the point of view of the consumer and the kid, the public, you know, this right. and to do a bottom up version of the Apollo program. We've seen enough top down. Yeah. Cause you're dealing with memory and, and you're dealing with a sense of like also creating memory. Like they even, it's even a line in the movie about, Oh, he'll remember it. You know, whether, whether it happened yeah. or not, you'll remember it. And that, that is very much something I don't think you appreciate until you're a little older. Like I, have very specific memories from when I'm young and then things that I probably have specific memories of that I'm making up that I just, I couldn't possibly remember. And, well, and your, memory, your memory becomes the home movie at your grandparents' exactly. house. It's like, oh, I remember playing in that. It's like, well, no, you remember watching the movie of you doing it. You were too young to even. And that's how everybody remembers the moon landing. Everybody remembers 9-11. Truth is very, you know, not everyone caught it in real time. The yeah. moon landing was experienced by hundreds of millions of people. But I happen to be falling asleep and don't really <laughs> remember. Yeah. So that, but I've seen it so many times. I, yeah, I do remember when he walked on the moon. But in to be honest with myself, and that's what I was trying to be in this movie, yeah. like brutally honest. I was like, yeah, I think I fell asleep. Yeah, it was. We had had a long day. Well, that's what makes it it so stunningly effective. Because, like you said, it could be home movies, but the way it looks, and then the fact that it is so honest with memory is kind of a tricky thing but the end result is kind of what matters just like looking at like parents i mean and not the first time you've, you've done that but like yeah the, you know the the idea of they're they're just people trying to do their best too and and as a kid you'll never understand that but as an adult telling the story <laughs> you can look and go ah oh i appreciate that or i understand why even though that wasn't what i would have done and and because it's coded in such a, a colorful look I think people do give everything the benefit of the doubt. And that's that's just what makes it work as opposed to because no one thinks about the dark, you know. The DDT yeah. seems hilarious, not like, oh God, that's that's cancer. Yeah, you remember the things kind of sweet natured, the the cheapness of the family, the frugality, the you know, all that is just these little charming irritants. Yeah. The big things, yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it, it becomes what it becomes. And then, like, once you guys have a, you know, start the editing process, start the 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 secondary, like, film, essentially, because just shooting it's one one thing on its own. How do you how do you find how to tell the story? Because you could really branch off in any directions. How do you how do you find the right amount of the, the home stuff as opposed to the, the space adventure? What do you how do you balance it so you know you're not excluding anyone who maybe gravitates to one side or the other? I was al always baked in conceptually. I, I don't remember being in the editing room thinking, oh, we need more of this or that. It was pretty linear. It was pretty, pretty mapped out. The yeah. transitions between, <clears throat> let's call it the reality and the NASA was, were kind of something to really think about. But I don't know. I always liked movies that treated the fantasies without, you know, like a Boonwell movie or something. You don't yeah. even change the lighting. You know, when it becomes a dream, you don't make it a dream. You treat it real because that's how the fantasy or the dreaming self perceives it as real sure. in that state. So. Right. You know, I don't think we, I don't know, we, it was, it was pretty laid out. Sure. But also, it's, you know, it's very much in service of your vision. And like Tommy, for example, is the one who would be like, I don't know, maybe we can tinker with your vision a little bit. But like, oh, at this point, knows what he's did. getting. <laughs> Every shot in the movie is a special effect. I mean, there's Tommy, <laughs> there's a, you know, we're sitting there and like, okay, so here we're at the drive-in theater and there it is. And, you know, it was kind of like, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's it's like, you know, okay. So if we move the camera, that will be an extra thousand hours of animation time. If we do it like, okay, so let's do that in post, you know, so yeah. everything's a shot to be worked out, you know. There were a lot of ontological discussions too, though, at the time where we were going like, well, if this is real, does it really matter if it's real, real, or is it the real, real yeah. fantasy <laughs> of the real, you know? Yeah trying to unpack that for a while and it's all in Rick's head. It was just up to us to, to unpack it. I mean, but it's it, fun to have a discussion and be able to say, well, it's all a fantasy, but within the fantasy, we want it to look <laughs> like how small is the space, you know, like yeah, somebody, you know. somebody walks by listening to the conversation and goes, those two people are insane. Yeah. They have none of those words make sense. Yeah. None uh, of that, but well, you they, create your own insane reality. Yeah. And then within that you make it work, you know? So. Yeah. And that's, and I mean, I, you know, in a kind of messed up way, the the best compliment is when the Academy was like, this isn't an animated film. Like, <laughs> yeah. like guys, can I tell you how animated this is? It's like, no, this is a live action film, right? You're like, is it though? The, the, I, yeah, I've had those kind of backhanded compliments like, well, this isn't scripted, right? Or rehearsed, it's just improvised. I'm like, oh yeah, sure. Yep, you know, I spent yeah. 10 years with no script, just making a movie. That's exactly yeah. how that happened. Just winging it, things just fall from the heavens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that was a <laughs> that that was a. Uh, it's been an episode to say the least. Yeah, I not, not a total surprise. I mean, no. rotoscoping, we kind of knew what we were getting into before. We just, I think, we assumed that people have would have broadened their sense of what animation is you, since we did our first rotoscope feature twenty years ago. You yeah. know where. It's sort yeah, of, you, you would uh, think, isn't the arc of history now to be more inclusive and more open? Right. And more, I, mean, I think most realms of life are supposed to be like that. Somehow the animation world has gotten smaller and more exclusive. And and they're coming off of, of Flea last year where there's like, oh, here's something we've never seen before. Let's embrace it. And then they're mm -hmm. like, because it, the, it was the trio. It was you guys. It was Marcel the Shell and it was Eternal Spring going, hey, those three things that are not like all the others fuck them i think and then oh wait no you guys they, said that. That. they definitely said fuck us i don't know yeah. if they said fuck the others but the others got the benefit of our they, six they, when when they ruled that you were eligible they, they mentioned that all three it was as if they had like justify it's like no no those two were those two were on the cutting block too i think they said we're just letting all you guys in where they yeah. never said no to those guys they definitely said no to us yeah which which i imagine is helpful to have like a like a netflix in that in that sense to be like oh god this is going to be annoying and potentially like money like this is just this is an unnecessary pain in the ass it sure is but you got to yeah. have that fight oh and yeah we wage that fight it's like don't tell us what we are and aren't that was just in their <laughs> their basis for it was so kind of off and we knew frankly that we weren't fighting 
everybody there by any means. Yeah. We were fighting a very small yeah. kind of locked in group. So if we could kind of get to them and we had such wonderful support actually from the animation community, a lot of letters on our behalf. I had a lot of incoming from people. I know Tommy did too, just from, they're like, yeah, that's got to change. This is bullshit. Yeah. You know, this is crazy. But yeah, it's, I don't it's, know why it's, like this. No, and especially when you, especially I think a lot of times it's, they haven't seen it yet. And it's like, oh, I heard and, and, and that. And it's, well, yeah. unfortunately they, and everyone who wrote about the film said, oh, rotoscope movie. And we're only a percentage of rotoscope. Anybody yeah. who sees the movie goes, you know, there's, it's this amalgam of, techniques and styles and you know oh, they've, they've decided you're the rotoscope guy that's one yeah. part of it it's so different from our previous films that were rotoscope movies yeah. this one we thought oh this is let's not even use the word rotoscope that's like we're we're kind of you know performance yeah also like why even even if you just give it a little bit of thought like why would they go back and do that again when they could be doing something different you know like as as creators like you know Notably, someone who doesn't really do the same thing more than once. Like, why Why would you think that that would be the move? You know, it's uh, people don't like it. I don't know. I, I'm i glad it turned out the way it did, because that would have been we, incredibly we, frustrating. We yeah. were confident that we would prevail because we knew we were an animated film. Sure. So we just had faith that the truth will, you know, find its way through. And uh it's a, it's, a very, it's a handmade it's a very handmade film yeah. and i think part when you're asking earlier about that feeling and how that's conveyed a lot of it is also the joy that you feel from the artist's fingerprints yeah. on each and every shot of that movie and part of the fight was really fighting for for them for the artists yeah. who put all their 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 love and and sweat into this you know for to to be told that it's not animated is just a real insult to all those people who work so hard on the movie, so uh, we we couldn't let that pass. That's like okay, we gotta. No, it's we, it's we an absurd get idea. Trenches and fight this out, and and hopefully everybody's better for it that they won't have these kind of fights in the future. And well, you would think, and yet other, we're constantly constantly surprised. But no, it, it is it is true. Like for a branch that arguably more work goes into something animated than anything, just because depending it's, on the style, like you're literally creating something out of nothing, and. Yeah. The hours and hours and it would be it's the equivalent of like if they would with stop motion being like but isn't it live action like you don't really understand how this works do you all right i have to explain you how i mean in a way i'm sure it's interesting to be able to explain something on like that kind of granular level to be like oh i can kind of i can i can actually do this i know how to tell you this as opposed to if it's live action and someone's like well i don't get it you're like i i don't really know how to help you if you don't get the movie it's yeah. just this is like I can I can science this for you. I can show you why this is. That's what was depressing to have to explain it to prof people who were supposedly professional animators. Yeah. <laughs> just, we thought you could just look at it and tell what it is and what it isn't. But we were so good at it, we tricked you. All right, that's how I'm going to choose to interpret this. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, at least the the reception even before it and now still now has been you know largely to wildly positive. So like you have that heartening sense of. I know we did it. We just have to convince yeah. you that it's the thing we did. Yeah. I mean, they practically ran out the clock on us. But here we are in yeah. December. <laughs> Our hat totally is rug. Totally a latecomer to I any know. kind of things. But for a film that came out in April, it feels weird to feel like you're Oh yeah. It's it's a weird it's a weird way to approach the the sort of award season type situation because it's like kind of coming in through the back door. And, you know, we have to then reappeal essentially to the people who were skeptical of us. Like, I know you said that, but now, hi, how are you? It's a it's a weird it's a weird conversation. Yeah. But after all that, we we're like, yeah, we're going to do anything, you know, just yeah. want to get eyeballs on the movie, potentially, if people. Sure. Oh, no, I <laughs> now that we're an animated film. Maybe people. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been trying I've been telling people for months it was it was essentially between like uncontrollable sobs being like by the way this is one of my favorite films of the year oh <laughs> there's it and it's one of those ones i think that it, it's easier to discover on your own almost than to be told about it because it is it is sort of you hear about it and you go okay but then you watch and it's another thing and i think that's 
that's in a way that's a that's a hallmark of your work. Like I don't know that the like one sentence log line is always the best description. You know what is. Hey. And if, if you can't do it to another person, just imagine how the algorithms handle it. <laughs> or, we, or when you've gone to ask people for money to make these things. They don't. Yeah, it's a miracle this got made at all. But they really like the script. I yeah. got to hand it to Netflix. Their algorithms weren't so friendly to something you can't describe too well. But, you know, yeah, it's the, it's, the, it's the balancing act of like, oh, money, that's great. Oh, computer says no. Oh, oh no. All right. Yeah. At the um, end of the day, we got our film made. But yeah, you have, you have to like be like, Trust me, I have all these Oscar nominations. Will that do anything? No, the computer doesn't like that answer either. All right, we tried. All right. Yeah, what category are we in? It's like, oh, you have period realistic smoking. So you, you're you not that. You can't be an all ages, you know, family thing. Yeah. It's okay, we're not that. You can't, you know. Not adult animation. Like, no, one, yeah. no one's really, no, no one's doing anything particularly. There's not bad. one film in the world. If you like this, then you might like. Yeah. No. Oh no. Even if even if someone's like, oh, waking life to this, it's like, oh, that's a very different vibe. Yeah, that's not exactly a direct match at all. No. If it, honestly, it it almost feels closer in in kinship to to like a dazed and confused. Everybody wants something like a this period of time, but at the same yeah, time, yeah. completely different activities going. Yeah. On. In my mind, those are like these kind of cultural, you know, drop in points to a moment in time yeah. that you get to experience fully through these characters but it it's really like a a cultural ex examination of a moment in time you know oh yeah no this is the, the reason this movie is as good as it is is because it's kind of one of a kind which you know the pains you guys have to go through when something's <laughs> one of a kind is backhanded <laughs> as a compliment but as a as a viewer or as someone like you know i see 300 movies a year one of a kind is 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 you know, shoot it into my veins at this point. All right. Well, we sure appreciate that. That's that's nice. That's oh nice. no, it's, it it remains it remains one of my favorites of the year, and it remains a film that I I keep championing. And I actually just got my my critics' choice ballot, so you know, um, I'm I'm sure I can well get something there. But you know, it's it's the um, mark of of movies that will also stand the test of time. And in, and in a in a weird way, you know, it's it may be you know buried second page of the you know the, on the app. But also, it's there, and and people will discover it by virtue of just wanting to watch a movie and and having a long enough career that the name is there and 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 all the things yeah. that work in your favor eventually. Yeah, you get some. I made my peace with that many many years ago. <laughs> as a filmmaker, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, you know, things tend to find their audience eventually, if not the moment of their release, you know. So, oh yeah, and especially if they're. Yeah. yeah, and you and and you've been unafraid of streaming. Like Last Flag Flying was was there. Like you know, the, there was never a sense of like, oh, he went to Netflix for this. That it, no one, you know, it never felt like a like weird surrender. It felt like, oh, it must be a a very director friendly project because it didn't happen just willy nilly to whoever wanted it. You know, there's yeah, no, no one ever asked me like, oh, what's it like Netflix? I think for me, they ask that to like Scorsese or someone, yeah. you know, but to me, it's like, oh, good. It sounds like you got a film finance. Exactly. Like, haven't you, <laughs> you know, you're like, when was the last movie you made? You're like, it was like a couple of years ago, man. Like, I, I, I always got another one. Like, don't worry. Yeah. But it, it's kind of like, oh, good. You, you found someone to. Yeah, I didn't. I, yeah, I don't. I tell people I can't afford to be uh, too highfalutin about the. Oh, 35, you know, only it's like, wow, you know, you're like, you're like, I listen, I've done it. I had a good time with it, would happily do it again. But you know what? I also want people to watch the movie and enjoy the movie and let me continue to do this. I don't want to get a job like this is way better. Yeah, I know, you know, our industry, everything, you know, you just everything about it in every field, you know, you just you're always adapting very subtly and continuously. Yeah, I mean, well, that's. Okay. The fun oh, yeah. thing about having 30 plus years is kind of like, oh, wow, times, you didn't feel like it, but like, wow, time's really changed and it changes again. And now it's changing once again. It's like, wow, all you can do is kind of roll with it and adapt. It's oh, yeah. I mean, having, you know, how many filmmakers can say they made a movie that made people want to be filmmakers? There's, you know, there's plenty, but there's not as many as you would think. It's a oh. <laughs> finite number of people who can who can say that. And then... You know, it doesn't necessarily get the next film greenlit, but it's a weird cachet to be like, oh, I've had a voice long enough that there's a whole strand of like films that exist because I made a film. And then that's 
it's a weird kind of situation. It's like, you know, oh, I, I coached a team and now all my coordinators are coaches. Like, oh, there's there's all these things that have happened just because I did a thing. It's You're like, a tree. Yeah. You know. it's, it's sometimes hard to trace that exactly, but, you know, it's kind of fun to feel that. In the, oh, in yeah. Way. No, there, you know, there, there's a filmmaker too who have very specifically said you did that for them. But, you know, as, as, a, as a rule, you know, you, you don't always hear. You just, you hope yeah. that people are watching and then that it hits them at the right time. And, you know, you stumble upon something that in, 10 years later that's made and go, oh, I think they watched one of my things. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, you guys should be super proud of this. I, I love that it took a little bit of fight to get it back to where it is. Like, it also shows that you care. Like, it would have been so easy to be like, all right, we, all right, we, we tried. Like, That's yeah, fun. we were not going away. We were like, man, we worked way too long and too hard on this. I mean, I, mean, I had the idea for this movie, like, in 03 or 04. Yeah, you I know? think I remember it saying, like, the script started in 04. I was like, yeah, no, he's not, he's not giving up after the better part of two decades. Yeah. I mean, this whole thing really was our own moonshot. You know, there's a million ways for it to go wrong and one way for it to go right. In our mind, we did land and return safely. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so I mean, seconded for the moon. That's how we felt. So the last thing we need is someone telling us what yeah. we are. And, and it goes back to like the indie spirit of it all. Of like, oh, I got to have a fight to get people to like watch my movie. Sure. Let's do this. I've done that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, don't you know I made movies in the nineties? We need we'll, to wrap we'll get, this one. We'll get in the gutter. I'll talk shit about anybody, whatever it takes. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you guys so much for uh for doing thank this. Uh, it's a pleasure. And yeah, really wonderful talking to you. Yeah. Likewise, and you should be, oh. like I said, very, very proud. Well, awesome. Thank you.